Good evening. Just about 7 o'clock Saturday, May 22nd, 2021, here in Sarasota, Florida. Today's recording is going to be a connector. I am going to drop a lot of seemingly disconnected pieces that it's really being done first and foremost for myself. Powerful, powerful, powerful revelations have come to me as I've processed this past week of my life. In my world of work, um, it's, it's amazing because it's different every single day. Um, it's impossible still for me to describe with words exactly any one aspect of my work, let alone what it is in its entirety. But I do know that Ripple 2020 will be launching. Very unique sort of launch. It may not look like a launch to others, but it will be launching officially the website on July 4th, which means I've got a very intense month ahead for myself. One full of focus and discipline. At a level that, you know, I probably the last time I did this was last June when I was preparing to launch the podcast. So I am in these final days of May, really more than anything, being my own inspirer, being my own coach, um, and guiding myself through another breakthrough point. Because our journeys are all relative to ourselves, and when you are constantly expanding and consciously aware of our natural tendency and desire to expand, when you have the awareness of it at the level that I do and the extent to which I, I it, it guides my life, it is my life. Constant expansion, which means I'm constantly dreaming of where I'm going to go tomorrow while also being present with the things that have manifested in my today in ways that I wasn't able to do for most of this life. And really honing in on my own ability to create and manifest my dreams and desires. My greatest dream has been for this life quite simply to live in a very different version of reality. This version never made sense to me. I struggled tremendously once I got out of college and joined the real world. I had my awakening, everything changed, and ever since then I have been slowly creating from nothing, from nothing, from scratch, my, everything that represents my life today. When I came back to Florida, the only thing that I thought was that I would be here for three months back in 2009, sorry, 2012, and that I would be going back to Seattle. I did not make it back to Seattle full time. So I arrived here with my bike and a suitcase with only a plan to return to Seattle, a place I had been for 14 months, a place I loved, a job at Microsoft waiting for me to return to once I took a mandatory three-month break in between contracts. And the power of what was calling me and how ready I was to take the next step towards pursuing and answering that call was too great to leave. So I stayed with zero plan of having, zero plan to stay here. Everything from housing to a vehicle to work, everything was to be created, co-created by my own energy at a conscious level that I had not yet played with within myself, which meant I had a great deal of learning about this process in my unique energy of creation in this vessel, in this time-space dimension. And if I'm not anything, I am definitely a very good student. I study. 
I studied this process within myself and I've studied myself and how in all the different ways that I've taken myself and interacted out in the world since my awakening in ways that I will never fully be able to describe with words. Full of purpose, a very clear vision guiding me. Today we're just going to drop a few connecting points because more than anything, I'm trying to be an example of showing that we get to make it up. We don't have to play by anybody else's rules. As long as you do no harm, you do not infringe upon anybody else's free will, we get to make it up. And it's time for us to mature and to be grown-ups and to learn how to communicate our needs and wants and learn how to take our energetic exchanges up multiple notches. Episode 23 of my podcast, I dropped, among other names, Roseanne Barr. Seemingly crazy to drop. Not only since that recording have I learned of a very specific person here in Sarasota who found his own Roseanne connection that was, you, could, I, you couldn't make it up. But I learned today that what I dropped Do it this way. Oh man. I learned today that Roseanne Barr lives on the Big Island. where I have visited for work three out of the last four years. I learned today that she moved there because of the Hawaiian goddess named Pele. Unbelievable synchronicity with that as well. Since I mentioned Roseanne in episode 23, I've also spent time with, spent an evening with the gentleman that I had met through the inspection of my windows, new windows in my home, gentleman that works for the county. He had apparently listened this episode and had sent me a text after listening and this was back when it was released a month or so ago and told me that he had a Roseanne Barr connection. I've since learned what that connection is, was, and such a powerful validator that even though I looked probably a little off to most people who watch that, wondering why I'm dropping these names. In, in addition to Roseanne's, I mentioned Mel Kay and Mark Atwood. Mark lives in Ireland, I believe, yes. Mel lives in Manhattan. Roseanne lives on the big island of Hawaii. I was told yesterday for the second time that I run like Miranda Carfrey. Miranda was featured in another podcast episode of mine, one back, I believe it was episode five, 
flexibility in discipline. Rini is her nickname. She's won Kona four times. It's an honor to be told I run like her. I've never seen her run, but from what I understand, she's an incredible runner. Seemingly strange as that is to have triggered part of this recording, it did. Working the event I worked, the name of her company has the number four in it. The woman for whom I worked yesterday, her parents were in town from San Diego. And the way her father reacted to my energy triggered a little twinge of pain of wondering if I'll ever feel in this life my own father seeing me like this person's father saw me after just spending an afternoon working with me. Not holding my breath that I will, but constantly reminded of the unique scenario that my immediate family dynamics, what that, what that, how present that seems to always be within me, constantly needing to keep it in check, if you will, and not be slipped back into feeling victimized by that, remembering my soul chose my parents and my brothers, my whole family unit for very specific reasons for this life. But that's a bit activated today. I listened to this recording, this round table where Mel and Roseanne were present. I listened to it as I drove to Central Florida yesterday, but I didn't catch the beginning of it. And the crazy thing is, I, I don't know when, when, if it's something where it's just the audio, then of course I have no trouble listening. But if there's video as well, I, I love taking in as much as I can with my senses to feel the essence of the moment and all the depth of it. I wasn't able to watch it, I was driving. But something that Roseanne was describing in this video yesterday, I got home about midnight, I had to take care of the kitties, take a shower, got to bed, you know, gosh, knocking on one. And I dreamt, I dreamt super vividly, super vividly about what Roseanne was discussing, which was a Jewish celebration called Shav, Shavuoth, S-H-A-V-U-O-T-H, Shavuoth, Shavuoth, 